We continue our series of sermons on the parables of Jesus as we read today from the 25th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, the parable of the bags of gold. I invite you to hear these holy words from the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received five bags of gold went at once and put his money to work and gained five bags more. So also the one with two bags of gold gained two more. But the one who had received one bag went off, dug a hole in the ground, and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received five bags of gold brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five bags of gold. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with two bags of gold also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two bags of gold. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. Then the man who had received one bag of gold came. Master, he said, I knew that you are a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your gold in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So you knew that I harvest where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed? Well, then you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. So take the bag of gold from him and give it to the one who has ten bags. For whoever has will be given more, and they will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. And throw that worthless servant outside into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to pray with me. O oh Lord, in the silence of this moment, prepare our hearts and our minds to hear your word for us this day and work your will in our lives. Amen. Many consider Hall of Fame baseball player Ted Williams to be the greatest hitter of all time. He's the last man to hit 400 for a season. He had extraordinary hand-eye coordination skills. On one occasion, he was given six baseball bats, one of which weighed half an ounce less than the other five. He was asked to pick it out, and he picked correctly. On another occasion, he returned a box of bats to Louisville Slugger because the handles of the bat were off by five one thousandth of an inch. A man with extraordinary God-given athletic talent. What skill and talent has God given you? What blessings have you received from our Lord that you are to utilize for the greater good? Do you take what God has given you and use it for the greater good? Have you received blessings and squandered them or wasted them? Or have you taken what God has given you and done something with it for the greater good of the kingdom of God? In other words, God has gifted you what have you done with your gifts? Jesus tells a parable about a master who has three servants. The three servants come to him under his instruction. To one he gives five bags of gold, to another two, and to another one. Each one of them given explicit instruction. And when the master is to return, he expects that they have done what is required of them. 
the master leaves, and while he is gone, the servant with five bags invests it and makes five more bags of gold. The second servant with two bags makes two more bags of gold. But the servant who has been given one bag does nothing with it. He simply buries it in the ground. And when the master returns, he confronts the three servants. To the first, he says, you have taken the five bags of gold that I have given you and you have made five more bags. Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been entrusted with much and you have done good with it. To the second, he said the same, having doubled what it is the master originally gave him. He confronts the third and the third servant simply says, I was scared and so I did nothing with it. And the master is very upset. Having given something special to somebody who squandered it, did nothing with it, the master takes it away from him, removes it from him, and says, because you did not use it, you will lose it. All of us recognize that we have been given much by our God. We have been given skills and talent. We have been given many, many blessings, relationships, opportunities, and for many of us, we have done a great deal with that. And for others of us, we have done very little. It is like the bags of gold. Those bags in Jesus' parable represent what it is God has given us, that we are to reinvest into the kingdom. With the explicit instruction, we are to do something with what it is we have been given. No matter what it is, every one of us have been given something that we are to utilize for the sake of Jesus Christ for the greater good of the kingdom. And it is our responsibility to do something with it. If we don't, Jesus makes it abundantly clear that one way or another we will eventually lose what it is we have been given. It will atrophy. It will waste away. When I was very young, my father was stationed in Germany as an officer in the army. So when I was a little boy, having lived in Germany, evidently I, along with my siblings, could speak German fairly well. I can still count a little bit today. Eins, drei, drei, vier, fünf, sechs, sieben, acht, neun, zehn. I can count a little bit higher than that. But most of the German that I learned as a little boy, I no longer know. I can't communicate with anybody who speaks in German because I didn't use it. Coming back to the United States and speaking to people who spoke primarily English, I lost my capacity to speak the German that I knew. We either use it or we lose it, says God. So we take what it is we have been given, the skill set that has been provided for us, and we do something good for it. And we are in a time right now where, of course, that speaks volumes. Notice that the gold is not distributed evenly among the three. One gets a lot more than the other two. But what it is they do with it is what matters most. Each one of us have been given different levels of skills and talent and blessing. But every one of us are to take what it is God has given us and utilize it for the greater good of the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 1 Corinthians that we all have been given a variety of gifts in the church, but we have one spirit. So what are your gifts that you are supposed to use in the church? Can you work with children? Can you sing? Are you good at teaching? Are you generous with what it is God has given you? Whatever it is, all of those blessings are like bags of gold that have been given to us by God. And it is our responsibility to do something with them for the sake of the kingdom of God, reinvest them in the work of Jesus Christ. And in times like this, in the process of what it is we are all going through, we are prioritizing or reprioritizing much of life. A lot of the things that used to be very important to us suddenly are just not that important anymore. Our list of priorities and what had to get done almost immediately now suddenly doesn't seem that important any, anymore for many of us. But what matters now is recognizing the blessings that we have and utilizing them and not taking them for granted. 
It is in times like these that we are in a position to reevaluate who we are and to whom we belong. And when things are difficult and challenging, we begin to realize that in some instances, the powerful are just as powerless as we are. Which means, of course, that we have to be dependent on the greatest of all powers who is in control. And so in the process of recognizing the blessings we have, it is our way of contributing back to what it is God has done for us for the greater good of all of humanity. So we take times like this and we check on each other to make sure we're all doing well. That's a gift we can give each other. We take what we have and we don't waste it. We don't squander it. For many of us, we have piled up food and supplies. We have taken much of what we have, but we're very intentional and very careful not to waste any of it anymore. What God says to us is that I, as God, continually give you blessings. You are never to squander it or waste it. You are to reinvest it for the greater good, for all benefit as a result. Uncertainty in times like this should cause us to pause and to remember how important it is to appreciate everything God does for us, including the gift of life, a gift that we all should take one day at a time. Have an appreciation for what it is God has gifted us with today. All those things that God has provided, all those relationships that we have, and most importantly and above all, to know that we are loved by God in and through Jesus Christ, who can be our support and strength in times like this, for many of us, maybe even like never before. We no longer take for granted the blessings. We no longer take for granted what we have, but we have an appreciation. So we all get through this as the church of Jesus Christ by investing ourselves fully in whatever it is we are called to do. All of us are called to pray, and I hope every one of us are praying fervently, continually throughout the day. All of us are called to strengthen our relationship with our Lord, so I hope that you're doing that by reading your scriptures, by offering up your prayers, by reevaluating your life and making that full commitment to our Lord all over again, as we all should on a regular basis. Notice that the third servant is not condemned for trying and for failing. He is for condemned for not doing anything with what it is he has been given. What have you been given that you've done nothing with? What have you been given that you need to do more with? All of us can think about that and respond accordingly. Because remember, the root word for miserable is miser someone who hoards or someone who buries or somebody who accumulates but does nothing with what it is they've been given. We don't want to be miserable. We want to be filled with grace and filled with hope and filled with possibility and that can only come in a relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. God has made an eternal investment in every single one of us in Jesus Christ. And God expects us to invest in him with our whole selves, our full bag of gold, however much it may be. It is filled with the blessings of God. It is filled with the gifts of God. And it is filled with the opportunities God is going to present to us to do something good with it. God has gifted all of us in unique and special ways for the sake of Jesus Christ. Your gift in this is to be invested in God's kingdom. Never forget all that you have originates with God anyway. This is a time when we all recognize that none of us are self-made people. We have intellect because God gave it to us. We have skill because God gave it to us. We have charisma or charm or skills in relating to other people because God gave all of that to us. Everything originates with God, so in moments like this, we remind ourselves to invest fully in that relationship in Jesus Christ all over again. Please don't ignore what it is the Master asks from you. Do something now with what you have. There is no greater investment than the mission and ministry of the Church of Jesus Christ. I fully recognize that these are uncertain times in lots of ways financially, 
regarding people's health, employment, but it is the church that is going to have to stand out. It is the church of Jesus Christ that is going to have to be that beacon of light in the world, which means all of us have to rally around the mission and ministry of the church for the sake of Jesus Christ. Please do what you can for the sake of the church in every way, financially, but also in your prayers. And once we resume gathering together in the different activities that make up the life of the church, give your all to what it is God has given you for the greater good of the kingdom of God through Memorial Drive United Methodist Church. Our role in life is to give more than we take. Mickey Mantle, also a Hall of Fame baseball player, shortly before his death, readily admitted publicly that he was a womanizer and a drunkard most of his adult life. He talked about how he had squandered so many special gifts that had given to, been given to him, how he'd wasted so many good opportunities to do something good for somebody else. And he said these words in a news conference shortly before his death, don't be like me. God gave me everything, poofed, wasted. He was asked by a reporter if he had signed a donor card, knowing that his days were numbered. He said, I've heard people say they like my heart. Well, they can have it because it's never been used. What a sad testimony to a life of a man who received so many blessings and squandered them and wasted them away. On the other hand, there's the story of William Borden, who was an heir to the Borden Dairy family fortune. He was a millionaire right out of high school. He gave his life to Jesus Christ, and he traveled as a missionary to try to share the good news of our Lord. On one occasion, he contracted spiral, excuse me, spinal meningitis and eventually died as a result at the age of 25. He had written inside his Bible these words, no reserves, no retreats, no regrets. It's time for all of us to put things in their proper place, to recognize the bag of gold that God has given us on a regular, daily, continual basis every day of our lives. So we hug our family and we give thanks for them. And those little things that seem to be bigger than life no longer matter. We don't hold grudges anymore. We forget and we move on. We think about what it is God has given us and we drop to our knees and give thanks. We take what it is God has given us and we invest it back in the kingdom. God will bless that and God will honor that because we have honored what it is God has done for us. Hallelujah. Amen.